G'day guys, Stewie here from Doggy Bros Tucker World. Well, we're here doing the fishing report again this week for the 9th, 10th, and 11th of February, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, guys, this week was a very good week to work. The weather was not ideal, but uh, look, it gives everything a bit of a rest. And um, unfortunately, this weather over the weekend isn't going to change too much. We're still up for, say, 20 to 25 knots coming from that south, southeasterly direction. At this point in time, last time we checked, and uh, look, a bit of swell offshore as well. So less than ideal uh, scenario, but there is definitely still options. And uh, look, if you can do a bit of extra work over the weekend, and maybe take a couple of midweek days next week, like Tuesday or Wednesday, um, at this stage, they are looking to be a cracker. But uh, look, scooting right along. So look, it'll be more of a what can you can expect than what we have heard, um, but definitely offshore, as I said, so mid next week, the weather does look like it's going to die down a little bit. That swell is going to have a bit, little bit of a residual swell left behind. But um, the wind in all should be pretty much non-existent on the um, Wednesday anyway. Um, it turns variable, five knots, it looks beautiful at this stage. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it does what it says it's going to do. But um, look, offshore, the last week before this bad weather, Still heaps of dolphin fish around, still heaps of snapper around. Nothing's really changed too much. That wind that we are receiving is southerly, so it's definitely gonna clean that water up. It's gonna push that bait in, and um, you can expect more of the same. So um, on that Tuesday or Wednesday, whichever day looks better, obviously it is hard, we're about a week out, and we're trying to pick a day, you know? But um, look, I'd be trying to zip out to the fads on the 36s, bag some dollies or something like that. Um, Still been a lot of snapper out on that 36 and 50 fathom line. Definitely Paternoster rigs, float line in, just with our um, glow in the dark egg sinkers, work a treat. And um, anything with a bit of glow, a bit of flash has definitely been the game changer. So we've had um, quite a few customers, including some of our staff here. They've, in that last couple of weeks, they're still snapper fishing and they're fishing next to their mates on the same boat using the same gear. And one person's just using a bare Paternoster rig or a bare float lining rig, so no glow, just a sinker onto a hook. And um, then the other person is using something with a bit of flash, with a bit of tail, a um, bit of glow, like a glow sinker or something like that. And they're catching like up to five to one. So, I mean, all of those little 1% changes, lighter leader, a little bit of flash here and there, a little bit of glow, definitely all um, adds up and makes quite a big difference at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, we've got, um, We've had a rather bad run of weather this year. So you need to make the most of it and um, use all those little added tips and stuff like that that you can gather along the way and hopefully um, fill that esky when you, when you get out there and give it a shot. Uh, still been a few pearlies out around that depth as well. Uh, it definitely is current dependent. Um, so after all this wind and stuff like that as well, who knows what the current's gonna be. I mean, I didn't have a look. I actually forgot to before I, had, before I pressed play, but um, yeah, so have a look around that 36s and 50s, as I said, up northeast around that um, 50s kingy ledge. There's still been a few kingies as well, but definitely current dependent and um, jigging and live baiting up there for that stuff as well. I don't think it's going to have enough time to kind of calm down after this big blow to get out wide, wide and deep drop and um, things like that. But I mean, deep dropping is still being good as well, but it just depends on that current. Uh, it all revolves around the current. And um, even if you want to push out wide and go trolling for some blue marlin, there's quite a few caught last week as well. So, um, or the week before last. So, um, yeah, lots of bait out wide, a few marlin, a few big dolphin fish, a few big wahoo, all of that type of stuff. Trolling that bigger size skirt. So we're talking like 10 to 14 inch type size. So it's definitely a good option as well. If you're out there looking for some deep dropping ground, chuck some lures out and you might catch, a, catch yourself a, uh, a blue or a decent sized dolly or every, all the dollies out there are big. So you just gotta be prepared and have the gear in the water. Um, coming back in a little bit closer, uh, look, you might be able to sneak out really early, maybe Sunday or Monday morning. Um, at this stage, I probably don't like your chances, but um, you might be able to zip out if you're gonna um, go through Corumban or something like that um, in smaller boats or jet skis, not bigger boats. and. Um, just be careful it is a bar, but there's gonna be a lot of swell as well. So you do have that incoming tide, there's a high tide around about 9.30, but uh, it's still gonna be pretty average. So 
definitely keep an eye if you if that's going to be your plan and um, kind of evaluate it on the morning. But still lots of spotties around, mermaid, palmy, gravel patches had a feel as well. Um, unfortunately, well fortunately but unfortunately, has been a few Spanish around as well. We are smack bang in that in the center of this closure at the moment, the first closure. Uh, it will be open on the 21st. So you've still got another 10 or so days um, that you've got to release a fish and try not to target them either. So try those little pilly rigs. I forgot to bring one up as well, but uh, try the little pilly rigs that we make here in store. Um, and that's kind of going to better your chances of getting more spotties and stuff like that instead of trolling big baits. Big baits are more of a Spanish um, Spanish targeted bait when you're trolling. Um, I think that's about it for offshore. I mean, it's pretty short and sweet, but the weather's just simply not allowing it over the weekend. Uh, hopefully, you can pull a couple of days off during next week and that weather does uh, kind of open up a bit of a um, couple of days where you can get out there and get amongst a couple out wide. Uh, moving back in now, so we'll start off up the um, jumper pin bar end. Been a lot of um, little white bait and froggies and stuff like that around the shallows, so um, around the shallows that all the um, swell breaks on. So we're talking the northern end of South Stratty, southern end of North Stratty, just in the bar. Throw little metals right up into that whitewash. You need it to be about the same size as a bait. So we're talking very small, um, 20 grams and under guys. Um, little chrome stuff always works a treat. I'll just throw it out. I always let it hit, sink and hit the bottom and just crank it off the bottom reasonably quick. And um, you should be able to scratch up a nice bead of tail. So average size hasn't been great, but there's quite a few legal fish in there as well. So, I mean, it's always an option for you and uh, it shouldn't be too bad up there either. So that's uh, that northern end of South Stradbroke should be a little bit flatter, obviously, because the uh, wind's blowing over the island more. So it hasn't got anywhere for it to fetch on the, um, the wind to fetch on the water and make it rough. Um, apart from that, up in the pin, still Dewey's around in the pin bar itself. So vibing's been working really good, as down the seaway as well. Um, look, Samaki Vibalicious, always a really good constant provider. Um, white and that desert sandstorm works an absolute um, treat. And fish traps again, another really good staple in the vibe market. Um, Fat Betty, that one there, really popular color. Heaps of jewies, and um, you always get bycatcher flatties and stuff like that as well. So. I mean, Vibe's always a pretty good option. Um, the tides are rather big, so you're going to have to try to fish either on that top of the tide or the bottom of the tide. You won't... It'll be very, very difficult to fish in between that tidal cycle just because there's going to be so much run. So we've had that all that rain. The water's going to be dirty. It's going to stir it all up again. And um, I'll just try fishing around probably that high tide around about that 9 to 10 o'clock type of um, time. So uh, other option is jigging. So... We do a little bit of jigging up in the seaway and up the pin as well. Um, just small jigs up to like 80 grams. We're just using 80 grams for a um, more for the profile size, so less for the weight. It will rock it down there, but you're using it on those nice light rods and um, the rod does all the work anyway in terms of working the lure. So the lure might flutter and stuff like that. It's just going to flutter a little bit quicker to the bottom because obviously it's shallower. But um, those, the Samaki Ribcage, Wingmans, the cast jigs that I just showed you guys, really, really good. Um, they all come rigged, standard with good hooks on them, so just tie them straight on and just work them pretty slow. So I kind of go quarter or half turn and just to kind of roll the rod around and I'll just work it. If I'm fishing for jewies, I'll work it a couple of meters off the bottom, five or six meters, and then I'll drop it back down and um, go again. So you want to kind of really focus on that bottom section, that bottom half, and um, hopefully you come up trumps. Flatties eat them as well, so always a little bit of bycatch as well, Taylor, Trevally, all those pelagic type fish that hang around the bars as well. So um, moving back around, so top end of South Stratty in those shallow lagoons, still been a lot of flatties caught. Throwing hard bodies, my favorite thing. We just got a, another load of the Duo 140 swims in, slim, sorry. Um, Great flatty lure, accounted for heaps since this past 12 months. Um, fantastic hook straight out of the pot packet. Don't have to change anything. Um, and they just simply work. So slow roll them, twitch them hard, it's up to you. And um, it's just a lure that works nice and noisy as well. Got a really good rattle in it. Uh, other than that, 
MMD Flatfish, we've got a few customers using these now and they swear by them in the shallow stuff as well. So we're targeting those medium to large fish. Uh, you don't, you obviously do catch a fair few small ones in those shallow waters as well, but by using this bigger bait, bigger hard body, bigger soft plastic, it definitely kind of weans out a few of those a little of fish. So you will still catch them, but um, just definitely less. Less little, better big ones. Um, Apart from that, throwing little hard bodies like those little shallow runners as well. That's that little 13 fishing one again that I showed you guys last week. Heaps of, um, as again, tailor and stuff like that in the shallows, along with those flatties as well. So if you rock up to a bank and you see a few white and you see a few mullet and all that bait's bigger, it's definitely worth throwing that bigger profile. If you pull up to a bank and there's all real little glassies, little hardy heads, little anchovies, little white bait, all that type of stuff, that's when those little hard bodies come into their own. Um, so that's a bit of an option for you. Um, again, still white in and stuff like that, and white in and brim, sorry, along um, Kalinga. Guys anchored up, just fishing bloodworms or beachworms or uh, yabbies, just fish it back. Brim, I always try to anchor off the point and fish back into the structure. They kind of always sit in that little back eddy type scenario. And the wide end, just, you just want a nice rolling bank onto a uh, little bit of a drop off and they should feed along that edge. So um, the other thing up that way is crabs. So heaps of crabs through that uh, Southern Morton Bay Island group. So anywhere from say Cabbage Tree, um, Jake as well, Mouth of the Logan, lots and lots of muddy still getting flushed out. So the river's still running quite dirty and uh, still not a lot of salinity in it. So a lot, not a lot of salt and still those crabs are on the move. So they're coming out and definitely put those like deeper channels on the sides of the channels and stuff like that. And um, you're bound to catch a couple of muddies as well. Coming back down now, around the mouth of the Pimpama, the mouth of the Coomera, definitely worth a shot putting your crab pots around that area as well, guys. So there's still been a fair few muddies around there. And um, even through the Aldershot area, Browns Inlet, that type of area as well. Crab Island to the Seaway, definitely been a fair few flatties. It's nice and clean on the high tide. So this is the thing, like we've only got the Coomera River feed in dirty water and the Narang. Both are pretty big systems, but um, they don't get as dirty as say the Logan and Albert and stuff like that up in the north. So the Pin Bar is gonna be quite dirty the whole tide cycle. Whereas down here, um, you've probably got half a tide where it's quite clean, it's quite fishable. Maybe a little bit cloudy, maybe a little bit discolored, but Definitely fishable. So heaps of bait in that clean water. Again, I'd be throwing those hard bodies. I'd be throwing stuff like even that little Nomad. Um, we've had these ones for a while and they've been smacking them the whole time. So um, good hooks on them again. And uh, just run them straight at the packet. Little Rapalas, they're always good as well. Something with nice flat sides so you get that really good shimmy. And um, just, again, look for the bait, look for birds, look for um, hard weed edges, things like that. Fish along that structure and you should catch a couple of flatties. Um, while we're in that middle kind of broad water section, there's been a fair few jacks around as everyone's probably seen um, on the social media and stuff like that and the general hype of jack fishing. Um, not much from upriver. Again, too fresh. I wouldn't really worry about it too much, um, but I'd be definitely fishing canal mouths, those runaway bay bridges, stuff closer to the broad water. And um, I mean, trolling when it's a little bit windy, which it's gonna be, is always a good option. You cover ground and you've got lures swimming and working in that right depth. So again, Samaki Reddix, really good lure. Um, that one on the top, I think is about 100 mil or 80 mil, sorry. And the one on the bottom is 100 mil. And um, it's about the right size, good quality hooks, run it straight out the packet. And um, yeah, hold on. Jack, trolling for jacks is always pretty good when you hook them. Try to veer out and try to drag them away from that snag a little bit. So um, they are definitely something that wants to go back home. They kind of mosey on out, eyeball your lure, swim behind or swim in front of it either way, and hit it. And they, when they hit it, they're going back home. They're already traveling at speed, ready. They know where they're going to go. They know what they're going to do, and um, it's not going to end well for you. So um, yeah, once I hook up when I'm on the troll. I always just try to kick the motor to the side or steer out to the side and just veer out and tow that fish out a little bit into that safer water, um, into the middle of the canal or into the river. Um, again, canal fishing, it's probably not too bad around the mouths and stuff like that. Uh, with all this wind, 
it's definitely going to be disturbing all that those little crabs and stuff on the pontoon so if you're into your brim fishing or you're not really into your brim fishing but you want to try something while it's windy try brim fishing um little crabs they're just little rocking crabs uh little soft plastic ring them on a really lightly weighted jig head throw these fellas into the um, pontoons again eco gear aqua they're just the little brim prawns and um really lightly weighted throw them into the pontoons and just fish them down that face and nine times out of ten guys if there's a brim there they'll eat it on the sink it looks like one of those little crabs or little prawns that normally lives in the little mossy stuff that grows on a pontoon has just dislodged itself and they're just floating down. So brim, natural, natural instinct, eat it, easy feed. And um, yeah, they fight quite hard on the light gear, so they're a bit of good fun. And in this bad weather, I mean, it's nice and sheltered in the canals as well, so it's definitely worth a shot. Um, going a little bit closer to the seaway, there's been so much bait in the seaway this last week. So... Um, Lots of little yuckers, lots of little slimies, pillies, bit of everything, bit of a mixed bag. Um, you see more flickering, showering on the surface at times, and um, they've been kind of been harassed by Taylor and Trevally and um, a couple of kingies and stuff like that underneath that bait. The other thing that's been under that bait's snapper. So we've had a few customers catching uh, a few snapper early mornings. Um, Biggest thing with seaway snapper is they do get spooked very easy. So you generally catch them early morning, late arvy. You won't catch too much in the middle. And um, yeah, so I'll just fish vibes again under that bait and um, just try to find that bait where it's a little bit more concentrated closer to the bottom as well, not just all on the top. Um, thing is, snapper, scavenger, um, a scavenger fish. So when you've got everything else eating all that bait, all the scraps are floating down, and they're just picking up all that stuff that floats down. So even float lining pillies in the seaway, I mean, it's a bit um, unconventional, but it'll definitely work, and you pick up all that scavenger stuff under that bait. So uh, that could be worth a bit of a shot as well. If you're nice and sheltered in the seaway, you've got that southerly wind, it'll be a bit ugly get in there, but because you've got that sub south wall, you've got a lot of shelter as well. So um, north wall of the seaway has had a few jewies and jacks on it, uh, for the guys that want a live bait or vibes again. And um, definitely just try fishing that turn of the tide just because those tides are so big. So you will get a bit of pressure wave activity on the run out. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit unsafe to fish it at this stage on the run out tide that is. But um, on the run in, it shouldn't be t as bad. So um, again, just check it before you go. Check it while you're out there. Always keep an eye out. Leave your motor running just in case something does happen. Um, I think that's about it for, oh, really quickly, sand crabs, heaps of sand crabs. Um, I'd be definitely putting my pots in around the, um, like the whole Crab Island bank system. So we're talking from up at uh, pretty much Browns Inlet, the mouth of Browns Inlet or Sovereign Island, way down to Ronway Bay Canal. Um, just find a bit of nice shaley bottom, um, just on the sides of those channels, put your pots there and uh, you don't have to wait too long. I mean, half an hour and you should have a couple of crabs in your pot if you're gonna catch them. So fresh bait's always best. We always sell mullet and uh, we always use mullet ourselves if we don't have any fish frames and um, definitely a good option as well. And you can just kind of putt around in this window and just crab, you know, have a fat old time. Um, the other thing is wide in, so you've definitely got a good tide for it. High tide, again, as I said, is around about that nine to 10 o'clock. 9.45, I think. And um, so that means you've got that first push of the incoming really early in the morning. So try to get out nice and early, pump some yabbies and fish the back of wave break um, around Carter's Bank and around those banks out the front of um, the Grand Hotel. I think it's Curlew Island and all around that area. Um, very light leader, six pound fluorocarbon, little single um, size four long shank hook. And just put that yabby on there, throw it out and just um, free spool a little bit so the whiting can come along, eat it like nothing's happening, um, kind of mouth it and stuff like that and swim away. When they swim away and start taking line, just give them a couple of seconds, click that bail arm over. No need to strike, they'll hook themselves and um, you're sure to get a couple of them as well. You also get brim, flatty and um, a swag of other bycatch doing it as well. So it's always a bit of good fun. Um, Water fishing up the rain that last week has been a little bit quieter just because of all that fresh water again, as I was saying before. So the, all that fresh water seems to push all of those fish more out into the broad water, more out into that open water, and um, definitely where there's more salt and more tidal flow as well. So um, yeah, 
Uh, next we'll do a little bit of in like um, fresh water. So fresh water fishing, obviously all this bad weather, um, change of barometer, it's actually been not too bad. Um, definitely little surface walkers have been working really good. So they're just a, uh, a little jitterbug and a little bass carter. So timber, making that different noise when it hits the water. I know I've mentioned it before and um, they work an absolute treat. The other thing, spinner baits. I mean, spinner baits are one of those just tried and proven. I know we say it every week, but um, slow roll these along all those new snags that are laying down in the river. And um, yeah, just kind of roll it along that uh, side that the water's pushing onto. Uh, so the upper river side. And it'll just look like that those little fish that get pushed up in there and then the bass are just going to be around there smashing, hopefully. So, um, and they'll smash your lure as well as it swims past. Um, look, apart from that, guys, that's about it. We did have a lot of new stock come again this week. And um, we've got a little bit of an exciting surprise. Tomorrow the 9th is the official release date. So this is Friday the 9th we're talking for the brand new 2024 Daiwa Certate. So we've got the full range, um, all the new sizes in stock, ready to go. These will be on the shelf first thing tomorrow morning, eight o'clock sharp. And um, guys, get in quick. We did get limited numbers and um, they are bound to sell out. So kind of a new, new exciting um, high-end reel. Definitely worth the money. It's a reel that you're gonna invest with and it's gonna last a lifetime. So um, apart from that, Heaps more mackerel rigs in this week. Um, we've been busy making them in the spare time and uh, a couple of new lures and stuff kicking around the walls as well. So um, yeah, hopefully everyone has a good weekend. Do stay safe out there. It is gonna be rough, it is gonna be windy and um, just don't take on those bars on with low light. You need a bit of light on them, but just stick to inshore guys. It's gonna be safer and easier and probably more productive for you. Um, yeah, too easy guys, have a good one. Give us a like, give us a follow, and um, we'll catch you at the same place, same time next week.